Hi there and welcome to another short little video here by Mr. A. Uh, today we're looking at the surface area of different solids and spheres. Again, 3D shapes, 3D objects, we're looking at the surface area. So we're finding out how much space there is um, around this whole shape, so around the outside of, uh, of different shapes. We're going to be looking at some cones, how to work out the surface area of a cone. We've got some uh, square-based uh, pyramids here. We also have some spheres to go through, so let's get going. Now, first up, we need to um, be aware of the actual formula for the surface area of a cone. So here we go, let's write this, let's label this so we know what it is. This is a cone and the actual surface area, so we'll just write SA, surface area equals to pi times the radius and in brackets radius plus the side, how long the side is. So pi, we know what pi is, it's on our calculator, we push the button. This little radius here, we're looking at the radius of the base. So we can see that the base of our cone is actually made up of a circle. We need to know the radius of it. So again, going back to some basic uh, measurement knowledge, our radius is the distance from the center of the circle out to one side, okay? So we can label that as R. So that's our radius. Now the side is simply, as the name suggests, how long this side here is, or either one. So we can label that as S. Okay, so that's our formula. Let's have a look at a quick little example. Uh, let's plug in some numbers here. And 12. Okay, now just like we've done before, we need to write down, um, first of all, the formula. Once we've worked out what shape we have, we need to work out what formula we need. So we've got the formula right here, we can copy that out. So surface area is equal to pi times the radius, I don't need to write the times in, and in brackets radius plus the side. Okay, so there's my formula. Now all I need to do is figure out which one of these numbers is my radius and which one is my side. So, like we've said before, the radius is the base of our cone. So therefore, the radius here is going to be 3 millimeters, and our side is going to be 12 millimeters. So our second step involves us taking these numbers and substituting them into our formula at the appropriate spots. So, surface area equals to pi times the radius, which is 3, and then in brackets, 3 plus 12. And we write these numbers in, we plug these numbers in as they are um, on our page and you can see our calculator here. So we have surface area equals to pi, we bring up pi times 3 and then we open a bracket, depends where your bracket is on your calculator, 3 plus 12, we close our bracket and we hit equal or equals or enter down the bottom there and we can see that we get an answer of 141.37 millimeters, we keep our units that we have, and in this case it's squared because we're working out the area of something, the surface area of something. So there it is, that's how we work out the surface area of a cone. Oops, sorry. We have, like I said, our formula there, make sure you copy that down and you have that down somewhere. And we have our quick little example. Uh, the only other thing that you might encounter is something like, uh, let me think here, for example, they might give you the diameter of the circle. So if we rub this out there and we keep going with this line to the other side like that and we say that the diameter is, I don't know, let's say 16 millimeters. Okay. Now what we're going to label that is as our diameter. Okay. So what we need to do here, if we go on from this example, we need to first of all divide that 16 by 2, okay, and this here is our radius, okay, so when it comes time for your formula, so we have our second step here, surface area is equal to pi times our radius, which in this case is 8 millimeters, so we have 8 bracket R, or 8, sorry, plus our side, which again is the same length, plus 12, and we close bracket, and you plug that in, and you get your answer, okay? So that's the only kind of uh, little difference that we may have 
is where they actually give you the diameter, but you need the radius. Okay, let's move on to another quick example here. Next up, we have our square based uh, pyramid. So you can see why it's called a square based pyramid. The base of our pyramid is actually, you guessed it, a square. Okay, so the first thing that we need to know for this little shape is the actual formula. So surface area, we have SA again, surface area equals B squared plus 2 times B times H. Okay, so there's our formula that we have. Now we need to know what those numbers and letters, where do they come from? Well, let's start off with the B first of all. The B, as always in maths, B normally stands for base and we have our base there. Okay, now because it's a square based pyramid, we know that all of these sides are equal to the same thing. All right, so they're all the same length. That's where the B comes from. Next up, we have H. H again stands for height, and this time, the height is actually the height of the triangle on the side, okay? So it's not necessarily, it's not the height from top to bottom, right? It's not that. The H stands for how tall this triangle here actually is on the side. So it's the sloped um, height, okay? So we can do our little 90 degree there to make that a little bit clearer. And we can label that as our H. So this is very important. Remember, if I were to draw this triangle out separately like that, so if this triangle here was this triangle on the front of our shape, the height is there. Okay, it's not the height of the pyramid from the point here to the very base to the middle, it's not that. It's the height of the, the triangle at the front. So, if we use now, let's bring in another little piece of paper with a spare one. So there's our formula there, that's our formula. Let's bring in a separate little sheet here. Okay, and let's uh, plug in some random numbers. Let's say that this will be eight centimeters down here and the height of this sloped side is uh, let's say 15 centimeters okay so the first thing again like I said before the very first thing you do you look at the shape and you say to yourself all right what shape do we have we've got our square based pyramid and we know it's a square base because we have these little lines which tells us that all sides are the exact same length okay once you know what shape you have, you need to figure out what formula you need. So, going back to the previous page, which is just out of view for a second, we know that our surface area is equal to B squared plus 2 times B times H. So, 2 times base times height. Now we go back to our shape and we actually label what, um, what number is what, basically. So, again, we said that B stands for base. It is the base of our pyramid, so we can label that as B, so we know B is equal to 8 centimeters, and H here is equal to 15. Alright, and just like we've done before, the next step is to simply substitute those numbers into our equation. So, like I said, B is equal to 8, so we have 8 squared plus 2, stays the same, times B, which is 8, times H, which is 15. Okay, and that's our little uh, formula there. And if we plug those numbers into our calculator, if we just bring up our calculator, we have, let's bring that into view, shall we? So we had 8 squared, bring that in, got the numbers here, 8 squared plus 2 times 8 times 15. Okay, so that's what our numbers are, and we can see them from our formula down the bottom there. And we hit equal, we get an answer of 95 centimeters squared. Alrighty, the very last shape that we have now that we're going to be looking at is our sphere. So with our sphere, it's very, very simple. All we need to know about the sphere is actually the radius of it. So again, if we go from the center of the sphere out to one side, that is our radius. Okay, and that's all that we need to know about the, the sphere to calculate surface area. So our formula if we were to write it, surface area is equal to 4 times pi, we need to use pi because we're dealing with, uh, with circles here, times the radius squared. Okay, so there's our formula, that's all that we need to do for these ones. 
Alrighty, let's have a look at our second last, or our last shape actually, that we're looking at for surface area. So we've got a sphere in the middle here, and here we have our formula to work out the surface area for a sphere. So like you can see, all you need to know is actually the radius of your sphere. So from the center of that, uh, that sphere out to one side, that's our radius. And you can see the surface area there is equal to 4 times pi times the radius squared. Okay, so that's our formula. If we quickly move on to an example, okay, here we have our example, our sphere, we can see that the radius is 9 centimeters, so from the, the middle of the sphere out to one side is equal to 9 centimeters. What we've done is, um, first of all, like I said, we need to work out what shape we're dealing with. We've got a sphere, we write out our formula, and we substitute this 9 here, Right, so that 9 comes from the R, so that's our radius. That's all we've done there. And then just like we've done before, we grab our calculator and we simply plug that into our calculator so we can have our little equals ready uh, for an answer. So we have 4 times pi times 9 squared and we hit equal, equals, and we get an answer of 1017.87 centimeters squared. Okay, so there's our answer there. That's how simple it is. Now before we finish up, uh, there is one more thing that you need to be aware of. Let's flip this page over for a moment. Uh, you will get questions where you'll have shapes uh, kind of placed on top of each other. So for example, you might have something like, uh, let's see here, a cube or a rectangle, just like that. Okay, and on top of it, you may have um, a square-based triangular uh, prism, just like that. Okay, something similar to that. Now, again, I'm not a, an art teacher, but you get my you get my point. So you may have shapes that look similar to that. So all we have to do, first of all, in these examples, is simply figure out what two shapes or what three shapes we are dealing with here, and um, just label them appropriately. So we're given that square or that cube uh, shape number one and we're given our square base pyramid on top shape number two. So what we need to do is simply work out the surface area of our, um, if we just straighten that up, surface area of the of shape number one which is our cube. Okay, so that's the very first thing. Then work out the surface area of Shape number two, which is our triangle or triangle prism. Okay. And last but not least, we need to add surface area of our first shape to the surface area of our second shape. Okay, so you go through that process where you work out the surface area of your cube, you work out the surface area of your uh, square based triangular prism on top and you add the two answers together okay you may have some examples where or some questions where um, I don't know let's see here you might have two cones placed on top of each other so you have your circle there like that and you have one cone and then on the bottom is your second cone just like that now again I can't draw but you get the idea so you'll have your radius in the middle there of let's say 10 centimeters Okay, and you know that the sides, which are all the same, okay, they are, let's call it 15 centimeters. Okay, so what you do in this case, again, you'd call one cone, cone number one, the other cone, cone number two, sorry, not number one, cone number two. So you work out, you work out the surface area of the first shape, you work out the surface area of the second shape, and you get your answers. Okay, whatever it might be, using the formulas that we've learnt previously. And then at the end, finally, you just add the two surface areas together. Okay, that's all we're doing here. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this little video. I hope it's helped. Please remember you can always go back, rewind, pause, whatever you'd like, uh, just in case you missed something. Please head over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to the channel and also on teachertube.com. I'll see you later, guys.